This is the Playdate. It doesn't have 5G, it doesn't have a 120 hertz screen, it doesn't have a custom chip, it doesn't even have any cameras. What it does have is a crank, an ultra portable design, and a lot of charm. Also, the Playdate is not out yet. If you pre-order one now, you won't get one till 2022. Luckily, our friends at Panic were nice enough to send us an early unit so we could tear it down. The Playdate exists in its own category, old school gaming with a modern day design. Modern that is, except for it's far easier to open and disassemble than say a Nintendo Switch. But we'll get into our step-by-step -step teardown in a moment. The most important things to know about the Playdate are that first, it's small. It's a bit small in my larger hands, but it should fit comfortably in most. Its screen is like an upgraded classic Game Boy. It's black and white, it's low resolution, but really crisp and responsive. The buttons are punchy, the crank has an appealing smoothness to it. Unfortunately, we can't show that off yet because our Playdate doesn't have games, other than thrillers like input test and settings. But we can show you how it comes apart. Some flathead screws with a donut ring around them hold the case together. The back pops off with the help of a pick to reveal a kind of tiny bento box. One battery, one board, and some cable noodles in between. At first glance, it looks like there's a warranty sticker in here. Normally we'd start getting all righteous and indignant, but the wording on this one is a bit different. It's just a reminder that breaking anything inside voids the warranty. That's pretty fair, also legal. Let's go further. Once you unplug the battery, it comes out with only soft prying. The 740 milliamp hour battery is not a powerhouse. It's about one quarter of the iPhone 12, less than even a single AA battery, but it's very efficient. We've only charged our Playdate once and it's been running for days. The Playdate's internals rest in a little mid-frame tray held in by posi drive screws. We can crank through that though. Once unscrewed, the crank buttons and screen stay with the front case. Next out is the motherboard held in by a tiny ZIF cable at the bottom. If you're curious, check out our full teardown on iFixit to see all the chips we've ID'd. Now the exciting part, the crank. Pull out a little staple bracket and the crank releases from its hold. The crank has a magnet in the shaft. That magnet works against a sensor on the nearby flex cable that detects the magnet's rotation. This means it won't wear out or most importantly, drift. The mono speaker is held down with adhesive. Easy to yank out, but a little tricky to re-adhere. The front of the Playdate has button covers that press down on these contact pads. They're on a flexible printed circuit glued to the midframe, and we don't really recommend messing with them. Finally, the screen is glued to the front, and it doesn't seem like you can separate it without damaging it. The Playdate isn't a typical teardown object. It's not like most things we tear down around here, it's kind of a one of a kind. With that in mind, we gave it a 6 out of 10 on our repairability score. While the screws are standard and fairly easy to remove, the battery is only lightly adhered and quite accessible, and the crank and headphone jack come right out, the USB-C charging port is soldered to the main board, and the screen and control pads are glued in and can't be replaced individually. If you want to see a device that's even more modular and repairable, be sure to check out our teardown of the Framework laptop, which scored a 10 out of 10. 